Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be solving the lead code question valid triangle number. So in this question we're going to be given an integer array called nums and we need to return the number of triplets chosen from the array that can make triangles if we take them as side lengths of a triangle. So just a quick example over here we have nums 2, 2, 3, 4. So one valid combination is 2, 3, and 4. And what that's telling us is that uh, we have a triangle where one of the lengths is 2, the other length is 3, and the final length is 4. So just given the lengths, how do we know whether or not it is a valid triangle? So for that, there's actually a simple kind of rule about triangles, which is the sum of two of any two sides must be greater than the third side. Okay, So any two sides, must, when added up, has to be greater than the third side. So let me just write it down so it should be easier. So let's say we have three sides, A, comma, B, comma, C. Uh, let me just draw a quick triangle. So A, B, and C. So in this case, what the rule tells us is that A plus B has to be greater than C. The same way A plus C has to be greater than B. And finally, B plus C has to be greater than A. So if all these three conditions are true, we do have a valid triangle. So I mean, you could just look at the most extreme case, which is when we have an equilateral triangle. So let's just say all the sides are 5. So in this case, 5 plus 5 is going to be 10, which is always greater than 5, right? So this rule always applies true for any types of triangles. And this is what we're going to use to find out whether we have a valid triangle set of values, right? So to actually just do that, let's first look at the most naive solution, which is going to be using three different for loops. And the way this would work is, we would have one for loop, which goes through all these numbers. So we'll go to two, then two again, then three, and then four. Now we would have a second for loop, which would go through these numbers, two, three, and four. And then a third for loop, which goes to three and four, right? Because we can't have repetition of numbers. And we would just keep doing this uh, on and on. So then uh, on the second time, we would have a for loop going through two, three, four. Then we would have a for loop for three and four, and finally one for four. So that way we just go through all the combinations and at each combination we're checking to see whether or not it forms a triangle. So this is a very naive solution and let me just show you what I have. So this is it, right? So we have a one for loop for x, one for y, which starts at x plus one, and then one for z, which starts at y plus one, and then this is the condition that we're checking for here. So nums x plus nums y greater than nums z, nums x and nums z greater than nums y, and nums z plus nums y greater than nums x. If that's true, we do have a possible triangle combination, and then we add that to our result, where we finally return res, and res starts off at zero. So that's pretty simple. That's the brute force approach of this, and that's going to be big O of n cubed. Now, we want to see whether we can come up with a better solution. And to do that, let's actually um, see how we can actually do that. So let's say we take this, okay? Let's take 4, 2, 3, 4 as an example. So Let's just say we have 4, 2, 3, 4. So one kind of way to look at this is we have three values, right? We're going to have a, b, c. And what we can kind of do is beforehand, we can set one of these values. So let's say we always decide what a is. Now, once we decide what a is, our goal is to be to, is going to be to find b and c such that it fits the criteria that we have. And the criteria is that when two sides are added, it's greater than the third side. So this is what, how we're going to approach this question. We're always going to fix A. Okay, so how can we actually make this easier for ourselves? So let's say we fix A as 4. Now, our goal is to find B and C. So in this case, or uh, as it is, our array is not sorted. So finding B and C is not going to be so easy. So we could just have a two for loops doing the same thing, but the time complexity is going to be exactly the same. There's no point. So let's see if we can actually optimize this and kind of come up with a better solution. So what we're going to do is we're going to sort this array. And the reason we're sorting the area and why it makes sense is because what we could do is we could have B as the smallest value and C kind of as the largest value. And what we can do is we can kind of find what is the limit. So what is the smallest possible and largest possible value that we can have? And doing that, we can kind of find all of the possible combinations. So as I go through this, it should make more sense, okay? So, for, oh, sorry, um, so we have 4, 2, 3, 4. So now let's sort it. So let's say we have 2, 3, 4, 4. 
Okay, so now this is sorted. I'm just gonna get rid of this over here. And this is what we're working with. So the way we're gonna do this is we're first gonna set a value of eight. So one thing that we that actually does matter in this case is what direction are we gonna iterate through it? So we could go from left to right or from right to left. But in this case, it's only gonna work if we go from right to left. And I'll explain why that is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off from right to left and A is gonna start off with this value over here, okay? So now we're searching for B and C. And the way we're actually gonna search for B and C is we're always gonna set B equal to zero. So B is gonna start off at zero over here at the zero index, and C is gonna be one less than A. And the reason C can't be over here is because, again, we cannot have repetitions. So C is going to be the index of A minus one. So in this case, C would be right over here. So this kind of over here is our search space. So what exactly we're doing here is checking if this is a possible combination. So to check if it actually gives us a possible answer, we're checking the sums of all three combinations. But in this case, we don't need to do so. We can just check the sums of the two smallest values and see if it's greater than the biggest one. So the reason, uh, and this is also one of the reasons why going from right to left makes sense because we know for a fact that uh, the largest value is going to be a because c is always going to be a minus one and b is just going to be zero so keeping this in mind over here a is always the greatest so once we know that b plus c is greater than a the other conditions obviously become true uh, and just to kind of write it down so b plus a is always going to be greater than c since a is the greatest and the same way a plus c is also going to be greater than b okay so we're just going to check for b plus c is greater than a. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to do 2 plus 4 is greater than 6. Sorry, is greater than 8, right? So let me just write it down. 2 plus 4 has to be greater than 4. And that's correct. 6 is greater than 4. Perfect. So now, how exactly do we account for this in our answer? So what this is telling us is that one possible combination over here is the values 2, 4, and 4 but we can actually extract more out of this. So we know that 2, 4, 4 is a possible combination, but what this also tells us is that everything in between can also be part of the combination uh, instead of B. So the, what that actually means is that since, so B is gonna be at the zeroth index in this case, right? So if it is valid for when B is at the smallest value, that also means that when B is anywhere in between, which obviously means it's gonna be greater than or equal to its current value, it is also valid. So in this case, B could be three as well. So let's just write that down as well. So three, four, four is also a valid combination. And if you wanna check that, it's just gonna be three plus four greater than four, that is correct. Seven is greater than four. So just to kind of add on to this, just to show you, so let's say we have two comma two comma three, right? So in this case, uh, the same thing applies, right? So two, four, four is a possible combination. And this is the first two. And then the other two, four, four is also a possible combination. So using this two over here, and the same way three, four, four is a possible combination. And so is the other three, four, four. So this three and this three, like I said, it's supposed to be a comma here. Okay, so now that you understand, so once we find this combination, everything in between can also make up a possible combination. So we're gonna have a result over here which starts off at zero, and each time uh, before we incremented it by one. But now, instead of just incrementing it by one, what we can do is we can actually in increment it with all these possible combinations. So instead of just looking at two, four, four, we can also look at this two, four, four, this three, four, four, and this three, four, four. And the way we get that is by taking the value of the index C and subtracting it by B. And the reason we're doing C minus B is because C is greater than B. So let me just write down the indices. So this is index zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So in this case, it will be four minus zero, and four minus zero is equal to four, and so we're gonna add four to our result. So now our result is zero plus uh, four, which is four, perfect. So here we found a valid result, and now we have four possible combinations, and exactly as you can see, we have four. So now we found one possible value over here, right? So we found these values over here. But what exactly is the next step? So as it is, B plus C is greater than A, right? This is the current condition that we have. 
So for the next iteration, and we already accounted for whenever we move B to the right, right? Since we accounted for all these three values in between. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move C one to the left. Okay. And the reason for that is we still want to see if this condition is true. So we're going to keep moving C to the left as long as our condition of B plus C greater than A is true. So now let's move C to the left by one. Okay. So C comes over here. Let me just clean this all up. Perfect. So now we have C at the third index and we do the exact same thing, which is um, over here we do the check. So we do two plus three is it greater than the value of eight. So two plus three is greater than four. So perfect. And now in this case of uh, five greater than four, that's correct. And now we do the same steps. So what are our possible combinations? So the first possibility is two, three, and four. Okay. So that's correct. And again, we're also accounting for all the possibilities in between. And now this is again, one of the reasons we're iterating from right to left and not left to right, right? Because we know it's an ascending order. So once we have a, a B and C set, right? It also accounts for everything in between of that. So in this case, the other possibilities are two, uh, three and four. So the second two, and then the second three, so three, three and four. So all of these are possible solutions. And to check it, three plus two, six, greater than four, three plus three, six, greater than, sorry, three plus two, five, and three plus three, six. Okay, perfect. So now this over here is three more solutions. And the way we know we have three is by doing C minus B, which is the index three minus zero. So three minus zero equals three, and we add that. So now our result is seven. So this is how we keep going on. So in this case, the condition is still true. So now we move C over here. Right. And now we check if a plus a b plus c is greater than a and it is three plus two, five greater than a. So now we do the condition again. So in this case, let's just directly get into it. So we have two minus zero, two, and now we have two extra solutions. So now our count for result becomes nine. Okay. Now we move c again. And when we move c over here, we have two plus two, which is four and four is not greater than four. So this over here is, that means it's not valid. So this is where we kind of stop and we look at the next possible possibility, which is where we move B to the right. And the reason for that is B plus C currently is too small and we want to look at larger numbers. And the way we do that is by moving B to the right. So in this case, we move B to the right. And what happens is that B and C end up at the same index. So at any point when the index of B is not less than the index of C, we're gonna stop out of this kind of a, this while loop that we're in. So currently we're done, okay? So this is the first iteration. And remember, we locked A into a single value and A was always at the fifth index. So currently we're done, right? So A being at the fifth index is done and we found nine possibilities out of it. So now we move A to one less. So now A is gonna to go to the fourth index and we do the same exact steps. So let me just go through this real quickly and then you can kind of understand that this process just continues on until A reaches the first index over here. Sorry, uh, until uh, A reaches the second index, right? So that's basically the process, right? And why the second index? Because, well, we need three numbers. So when A is at the second index, uh, B would be here and C would be here, right? And those are, and we have to have three numbers for a possible uh, set of triangle values, okay? So let me just show you what this looks like. So A would be over here. Then we, uh, B is always at zero and C is at A minus one. Perfect. So now that we have this, all we need to do is look at the same conditions. So three plus two is greater than four over here. So now our number of possibilities is three minus zero. So we add plus three over here. And now we move C to the left. So the same condition is true. So now we have two possibilities here. So plus two. Now we move C to the left again, but over here, it's not true. Two plus two is not greater than four. So now we move B to the right. And in this case, the B is not less than C by index. So we're done. Perfect. Okay. So now A gets moved to the left by one and the same steps follow. B is over here. C is over here. So we have B plus C, which gives us five and five is greater than eight. So the same steps follow. So over here, we have two possibilities. So plus two. So we move C. And now we have two plus two, four, which is greater than A's value of three. So that's uh, one minus zero. So that's one possibility. And now we move C again, and now they're the same index, so we can't do anything. 
Okay, now finally A gets moved again. So this is the last time we move A. And over here, B is at the zero of index and C is at the index A minus one. So currently, uh, let's look at this. So this is two plus two, four, and four is greater than A's value. So that is one possibility because index one minus zero, so plus one, perfect. And now let's move C to the left and obviously we can't do anything. And this is the end. So this over here is our final solution. So let's just add it up. So nine plus three plus two, so that's five, seven, eight, nine, eighteen. Okay, so our result here is eighteen for the area two, two, three, three, four, four. So let's just actually check if that's correct. So let's just do custom test case. So two, two, three, three, and then four, four. So run code. Okay, and our expected answer was eighteen, and we also got the answer eighteen. So this over here is the solution that we're going to use, and I think it is pretty intuitive. And now let's just see what this looks like in code because I think that's a lot easier to understand. All right, so we're going to start off. The first thing we need to do is we sort num. So num stop sort. And the advantage of this, I think it takes log and time, and it happens in constant space. So yeah, there's that. And we need to uh, have a result, and let's just equate that to zero in the beginning. And now we're going to have a for loop for the a value. Remember, a is being fixed. So a is going to be for a in range. And we're going to start off from the ending. So the last index is going to be the length of nums minus 1. And we're going to go all the way up to 1. So uh, what that means is we're going to go, uh, the last index is going to be the second index, which is exactly what we want, right? This is the last index. Okay. And each time we're going to decrement it by 1. Okay. So this is for a. And now we need to uh, arrange B and C. So B and C, and B starts off at zero all the time, and C is always A minus one like we defined. Okay, so now we're gonna have a while condition. And remember, the condition was we keep going as long as B is greater than, sorry, is less than C. So as long as B is less than C, we stay in this loop. So now we first need to check if this is a possible combination. And the combination that we need to check was for B plus C has to be greater than A. So let's do that. So nums B plus nums C has to be greater than nums A. So if this is true, we have a valid triangle. Okay, at this point we have a valid triangle. And so since we have that, we need to account for that in our result. And the way we do that is we get all of the indices in between as well. Remember, we did that, so to get that, we're going to do uh, C minus B, right? So C minus B, and that gives us all of the number of possibilities. And the other thing that we had to do once we have a valid triangle is we had to decrement the value of C, right? So we decrement C by 1 to look for other possibilities. So C minus equal to 1, perfect. Now else, if this is not the case, we don't have a valid triangle. And we want to look for larger values. So we want larger values. So we move a a plus equal one. So okay. So sorry, a small mistake over here. So this is supposed to be b plus one. So we increment b to the right by one, right? So, uh, okay. So that's exactly what we do. B plus equals to one. And finally, outside of the while loop and outside of the for loop. When we're done, we're going to have a value for result, which we uh, which we end up returning. So let's submit this. And as you can see, our submission was accepted. So hopefully this video did help you out. Do let me know if you have any questions. And thanks a lot for watching. Thank you.